guys, so the sectioning is pretty simple. We're going to create a rectangle shape on the top of the head following the parietal ridge, across mid crown, and then back down the parietal ridge. And then we're going to split the head in half at the division point, which is right behind the ear, uh, right where you see that head kind of curve towards the back. That's where you want to separate uh, the front and the back. Then we're going to split directly down center back, and that's going to create a nice long vertical section uh, and create two separate panels in the very back, which you, which you can see uh, on the diagram next to the video. So I'm elevating everything straight up in the air. So we're working classic 180 degree section uh, or haircutting right now. The reason I wanted to make this video is because I want to show you guys that 180 degrees is holding it opposite of zero, right? So as I'm working through the head shape, zero would be straight down from this part of the head. Um, so 180 degrees would be straight up. When we move to the top of the head, we're going to shift our angle that we're holding the hair because 180 degrees is not straight up. So when I was in beauty school, that's what they taught was 180 degrees. You could basically turn the mannequin upside down, cut it flat, and then that would be a 180 degree haircut. We're shifting it today. Um, this is kind of my own little version of what I think a 180 degree haircut is and what actually truly collapses uh, the entire um, weight and density of the haircut. So we just go through, everything comes up to that stationary guide. So we cut everything horizontal across the top. Um, now I'm connecting each side together, uh, but it's just very consistent staying square in the back of the head uh, and making sure I'm elevating everything to the exact same point, uh, creating a very strong guideline in the top of the head. This is also considered concave layering. So um, those of you that like to do concave layers and you're working with a square shape in the back, horizontal is a great way to go because it's very simple to just elevate everything straight up in the air. You don't have to worry about your elbow getting in the way or elevating your elbow too much. Uh, it's just a really easy way to cut those concave layers in the back. And what a concave layer basically does is it's going to go through and um, collapse any of the shapes. It's going to create layers, uh, very seamless looking layers, and, uh, and just collapse in your shape. You're not building up any weight at that point. So as I finish up the back, now I'm going to work on the side. Now, this is elevated at 180 degrees. My finger angle is shifting to help push more weight to the back of the head. So what I want to do is create almost a little more of a face frame in this haircut. So I'm over directing everything forward, but still straight up at a 180 degrees. So uh, I wanted to keep that 180 degree angle, but that doesn't mean everything has to come straight up and, and live flat square um, across the head. So we're creating more of a rounded layer, kind of pushing it off of the face um, to open up the face in this haircut. We do the same thing on the opposite side. So taking a horizontal section, but shifting my finger angle to create that length. Now the guideline is coming from the previously cut section. So I'm taking a piece of that top layer, which you can see at the bottom of my finger and connecting it uh, in the haircut that way. So we are connecting it. So just make sure that you see that guide in the back. And now I'm going to go through and blow it dry. This is a big thing I've been doing lately. Um, because as I'm, I'm trying to figure out ways to speed up time in the salon and also be more efficient. So I feel that blow drying the hair, uh, because I already have it sectioned um, and really seeing the shape kind of coming to life before I move on to cut my next section just works really well for me. Um, I also... Uh, some people have asked, well, isn't the hair a little bit shorter? The hair isn't shorter. The density changes. So um, a lot of people talk about how hair kind of expands and grows when it gets um, – when it starts to dry. Well, when it starts to dry, it doesn't shrink up or anything. It really just, it, the density expands, so it makes it appear shorter, but the hair's never going to change really too much length. So, and either way, I like, it's not going to be that much to where if I connect the bottom and the top that you're going to notice it anyways. So now I'm going to go through and clean up the bottom. I don't start off the haircut on the bottom because I want to decide my length later um, and I decide my length based on what the density looks like when I finish 
the layering of the haircut. So if it's a little weaker, I might take the weight or the length up a little bit. Um, and may maybe sometimes I can keep it a little bit longer. So you can see a nice strong line, a lot of really cool uh, invisible layers in there. So pretty cool haircut so far. Now I'm going to part the hair where it's going to live. So this is where the 180 degrees is going to shift a bit. So think about where zero would be from this corner of the head. So now I'm elevating it straight up from that, which is 180 degrees. So it's a nice shift um, and a pretty cool angle that you can see that we're holding the hair. That's going to leave that side nice and light. And now I'm going to go through and cut the opposite side. And I'm going to bring that over to me. So as we're working on the top of the head to make it as light as possible, because this is going to fall on the opposite side of the head, I'm completely shifting it um, to live at 180 degrees and give me a nice light uh, feel when it flips back over to the other side. So she's going to wear this on the opposite side of the head. The other thing I want you to see, and you can see it the best in the diagram, is how my finger angle is on this. I'm pretty much following, we're over directing it a little bit over the corner of the eye, and my finger angle is shifting um, towards the corner of the eye as well. So I'm trying to get a little bit more of an angle on the cut to give it a nice little face frame. So now we'll go through and blow it dry. Again, I love the fact that I've already dry and ironed the bottom. So the bottom is done. Now I just have to blow dry that top rectangle and my haircut's pretty much complete. So go through, vibrate iron, iron it up, use the Ergo paddle brush to get a nice flat wrap feel and uh, get it, giving us our polished look. I'm gonna go through and show you guys another look after we get the dry cutting done. All right, you'll notice they switch to kind of a, a, a vent brush when I'm ironing. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is because I like to, I don't like to have as much tension. I like to get under the hair and kind of scoop it. I'm not trying to create such a flat feel. Plus it's a smaller brush, so it's just easier to work with. All right, now we're gonna go through, you can see the face frame that we created using elevation. Now using elevation doesn't mean that you're gonna have that perfect face frame. So what I'd like to do is just go in a little bit of slide cutting. This is with my Mizutani DB20 scissor. Um, this is the scissor I talk about that I use all the time. Um, I also have it on freesaloneducation.com. So if you'd like to check it out, definitely do that. Uh, it's on our shop. But I just go through and I slide cut and add the pieciness to the face frame so that those pieces just really happen for her when she goes to style her hair. And now I'm going to go through horizontal, elevate the hair up to that 180 degree point and just do a little bit of point cutting to lighten up the layers, soften it so it gets a nice uh, flow to the, to the layering as it falls. And now I'm going to grab that corner eye piece um, just to lighten that up a bit as well. Always good to do a little bit of point cutting on a hard line. If you're looking to kind of soften some weight, just going through there, deep point cut, but not trying to change it too much. Now you're gonna see when I add this hairspray in, uh, this is the Bricado Medium Hold Hairspray. When I go in there, you can see those pieces just come to life that I cut in there doing that slide cutting technique. So that's why I love doing that because it just separates it so, so much better. So you can see, uh, pretty cool haircut. This is definitely cooler than the 180 degree haircut that I learned in school. This is a wearable, definitely uh, a, a great haircut I would do on a lot of different clients. So um, hope you guys like that. Now we're gonna go through large barrel curling iron and I'm just curling everything off of the face. So like I said before, I when I did the layering in the haircut, I did open layers. So I was opening up the face, cutting everything to fly off of the face. So when I iron it, I iron it off the face and it's going to fall perfectly the way I wanted it to. And I'm using that brush again. Uh, this is the Paul Mitchell 413 brush, probably one of my, the second favorite brush uh, that I use. Um, so it's pretty much good for, for anything you're working with. So now the last little bit, I'm curling the, the bang or the kind of fringe area, the opposite direction. And now I'll go through, use my fingers to push the hair back 
and then hairspray to uh, finish off the look. You can see how nice those layers come off of the face. Uh, pretty psyched on this 180 degree haircut. Hope you guys like it. Let me know in the comments below. Love to hear your thoughts. Thanks.